What's up, everybody? Welcome to this week's episode of the Just Saying Podcast. I'm your host, Justin Martindale, and this week's guest I'm so excited to have. Uh, he is a New York City high school history teacher, stand-up comedian, currently touring all over the country where he talks about his life as a teacher uh, and his experiences dealing with students from all walks of life. He is also the co-host of the podcast Social Studies with previous guest Joe Dombrowski. He was also featured in the Netflix reality show The Trust. Please make some noise for Gaspar Randazzo. You said it right. Yeah, that's such a like. Nobody says it right. Gaspar Randazzo. Well, it's technically Gaspare. Gas okay, but relax. I would never say it like that. Gaspare Randazzo. When you say it like that, people are like, "Oh, this guy's like fancy and bougie." Yeah, and, it sounds like a sophisticated pirate. And I'm <laughs> an Italian pirate. <laughs> Italian, um, yeah. But yeah, I'm not that person. Yeah. I just walked two miles here and then I'm dripping in sweat. The You're gross. gasping. That's what you are. You're yeah. gasping for air. But I just say Casper with a G. Casper with a G. What is the background of the name? My dad has it. My son has it. Really? My uncles have it. My nephews have Everybody in my life has the name Gasper. You're either Gasper or Joe. Mm. So some of us got lucky. Yeah, your podcast host is is <laughs> Joe. Yes, but yeah. like some of us are just Joe, and then everybody else is Gasper. So like I spend my life explaining my name to people, and my brother's just like you're gonna pass Joe. it down to everybody else to explain my son their name. Does the same thing. But who was the OG Gasper? Some guy in Italy, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you have no idea. No, I mean, it was a family name. I don't. Yeah. Know. Are you Italian? Yeah. Way from Sicily or Italian? It, or, mm -hmm. or I Italian. think I, I just took the 23 and Me over Christmas. I want to say, yes, like Sicily. Okay, yeah. So some town in Sicily, yeah. there was a bunch of Gaspers and Randazzos. And I guess I just was luck of the draw. I don't know. My grandmother was Sicilelli. So I don't know if that's like a... I know her. Yeah, probably. Could you imagine if we're like we're like brothers? Cicerelli is a common last name. It is, mm -hmm. yes. Like Gasper. In the Italian communities that I roll in. Yeah, it's, it's at our clubs. Cicerelli. At our Italian clubs. Yeah, that's so... That's real. Exciting. Well, I'm glad to have you on here. Um, what, So let's just talk about the journey <laughs> uh, that you just took to get here. Okay. Uh, you just thought what? It was just a, a little hop, skip, and a jump? So I was at the Netflix studios. I was on the show that's Trust on yes. Netflix back in January. So today I was like going to be in LA doing a stand-up show unrelated to anything to do with Netflix. Mm -hmm. So I told Netflix, I was. they were like, oh, you're going to be in LA. Why don't you come down and say hello at the offices? So I'm like, all right, cool. So I'm, I get in the Uber and I'm driving with the Uber driver and I'm like, oh, I'm a, he's like, what are you doing here? I was like, oh, I'm a stand-up comedian. He's like, why are you going to the Netflix building? So I'm like, oh, I'm going to the Netflix building because I have a meeting with Netflix. So he like stops the car and he's like, you're a famous Netflix comedian? And I was like, no. I was like, I'm really just like a, a, a D-list comedian. And then Aww. I was also on Netflix. Yeah. Like two completely separate entities. He got so hyped up. Like he was like blasting music, like screaming in the car. We get to the, uh, we get what, to- What song was he blasting? Gasolina, of course. So, Cause he was trying to hype me up. So I was like, and he was like, "I've got you, boo." Penny I was hyped. Yeah. I was feeling like I was a Netflix comedian. Oh yeah. <laughs> and like, so now we pull up to the gates, and he's like, "I got a Netflix comedian in the back. I have to take him right to the front." So I was like, "No, no, 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 no. I'm, that's not me." I was like, "I'll just get out here." So the security guard's like. What do you have? And he's like, a Netflix famous comedian. I'm like, no, 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 no. So then she, he rolls the back window down and I'm like, oh God, no, please don't look at me. And they're like looking to see if I'm like Matt Reif and mm. I'm not. So I was just like in the back, like covering my face and they're like, never seen him. I'm like, that's Ooh. what they said. I'm oh. like, I'm like thanks for that. And I was like, LA man, just always like, keeping yeah. me in the balls. So I was like, it's all right, just leave me on this curb. And then it turned out he left me on the wrong curb. So I had to walk around the whole building, which started my heat journey. And then, because it was 100 degrees. Yeah. And then I wore pants because I thought that everybody would be more formal, but I was the only one in pants. Regretted that. And then afterward, I was like, oh, I have like two hours to get to where we're filming the podcast. So I was like, that's plenty of time. I'll just walk. Because, like, coming from New York, like, we walk places. Oh. <laughs> so I walked. It was, like, three miles, I'm going to say. Mm -hmm. it, it said an hour and 17 minutes. I was like, I'll get there in 40. I did, but it was, like, a hot 40. Like, I'm drenched in sweat. I actually stole stuff from the Netflix building. They had, like, these... um The snacks. Well, I, st I ate a lot those of those. Those are great. Um, but they had, um uh, like, these, like, deodorant, like... Ooh. Like, deodorant wipes. Mm. I don't know like what they dude were. wipes? Kind of like dude wipes, but I didn't know if I could say that on here if like well, they're not whatever. sponsored. 
boy wipes. Um, <laughs> right? Don't use that. <laughs> That's worse. That might be worse. I think boy wipes <laughs> is very different than dude wipes. Boy wipes. Do I? Yeah. The wipes. Yeah. So I was just upstairs in your bathroom just dude wiping myself. <laughs> like, because I was like, I'm fucking sweaty. That's crazy. Well, so, I'm glad you made it here. I'm Did here. you see any, like, Homeless visual? Homeless We just visually simulated all over? Mm. You know, I'm used to New York homeless yeah. where, like, They'll stop you. They'll make direct eye contact with you and take a shit. The mm -hmm. homeless here, I felt like we're a lot more like tweaky. Yes. And like that's more frightening. Cause like if you're just gonna take a shit while locking eyes with me, that's, that's fine. fine. That's fine. That's I can live with that. Yeah. You know, maybe you wanna pull it out while you're looking at me. I get it. It's a two. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But like this, they were so unpredictable. Yeah. No, it's summertime like, tweakness. For yeah. Sure. So like, I was like, ooh. And like I had my phone in my hand. I was on the phone with my mom. I was like, my, I gotta go. I don't know what's about to happen. Yeah. She's calling me back, thinking I'm getting killed. I'm just, <laughs> you know, walking through blocks, avoiding the tweakers. Then my exactly. kids are trying to FaceTime me. I was like, not now, not now. I'm on the phone. I, it was good. I had a good time walking here. Yeah, yeah. It's always an adventure. And also, like, shout out to the Uber driver who apparently is an ex-New York City cab driver. Yes, he's from Brooklyn. There you go. I didn't even know that. He was just like, I got a, I got a comment from Netflix here. Like, yeah. most Uber drivers would be like, uh. But I hope he wasn't disappointed. And oh, like, he was. As, he, as you got out, he just turned down gasoline. <laughs> like, it was just like, oh, man, I hyped you up so much. And then I didn't like, know who you were. We got stopped oh, at the gate. God. <laughs> but see, you're different where you'd be like, no, 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 no. And I'd be like, oh, well, go on. Like, if he was like, I got a Netflix comic here, I'd be like, oh, well, yeah. But I just, I knew, like, I knew the security guard was going to be like, what the hell is he doing? Yeah. So I didn't want to look like a, a double asshole. Yeah. So I was just like, I'll just take it once, you know? Fair enough. So, but it's all right. It was fun. Good. Good. Well, you're on the, what was the show, The Trust? I remember seeing, I didn't watch it. No, I didn't either. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's fine. What, so what was The Trust about for our viewers? All right. So, okay. They take 11 people, right? Yeah. They put them in this house. It was this like crazy house in the Dominican Republic, beautiful mansion. Then they were like, hey, all of you guys. So we didn't meet anybody, see anybody. This was the hardest part. We knew nothing about the show before we went in. Perfect. Like when I got casted, they were like, we can't even tell you what network it's on. I was like, well. Well, how did you get cast in it? So, all right, backtrack a little. I, I During COVID, I was just bored one day. So I was like, oh, you know what would be fun? There was like an audition. It was like history teacher, uh, someone who knows history and is funny. So I was like, I think I'm a little of those two, not according to the lady at Netflix. Uh -huh. But I was like, whatever. <laughs> so I was like, I'll do it. I, so I auditioned. I went pretty far in it, but I didn't get picked for whatever reason, right? So time went by. I thought nothing of it. Like nine months later or whatever, I get a phone call and it says like LA, Hollywood. So I'm like, <laughs> like Hollywood. Everyone's calling, like yeah. joking. I pick up. They were like, "Hi, do you remember us from the show?" That from you nine before? months ago. They were like, "We really remember you. your casting tape. It was great. We have another show that might be interesting that you might be good on." Oh. So I was like, "All right, cool." But now, like at this point, I was like jaded because I went really far on the other show and didn't get it. So I was like, "All right, whatever." So I went. I sat in on the first audition, second audition, third, fourth. So then I'm like. Shit, I might be like really good at auditions, or like I might be getting on this show. Uh -huh. And then like in January they call me and they're like, "Hey, we see you're booking a lot. Like, don't book anything in March." And I'm like, "Well, why? Like, either tell me now or don't Ex tell me don't at all." Don't waste my time. Because I was like, I can't not book because like this is part of my livelihood. So they're like, "Well, you know, blah blah blah. Like, we can't." So I had to go to my school. So I'm still actively in the classroom teaching. Uh -huh. I couldn't just be like call out sick for a month. So I had to like <laughs> actually resign from teaching. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I had to quit my job as a teacher, but you have to give 30 days notice. But Netflix wouldn't tell me if I was on the show or not. So now I'm like- Netflix my... is a joke. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm too... uh... um, so I go to my school. I'm like, listen, like I'm going to give you my 30 days, but I don't really know if I'm really leaving. And the, Are, but, That's crazy. But that's allowed. Like, you're allowed to rescind it at any okay. time. So I was like, whatever. So now I'm just going to give my 30 days every other day. Right. Now you know that. the ropes. <laughs> yeah. So I gave my 30 days. And then, like, five days before we casted, they called me. And they're like, hey, you got it. Well, they actually called me. And they were like, we would like to schedule a meeting with you tomorrow. I said, if you're making me come on a meeting to tell me I didn't get it, I'm coming down to L.A. and going nuts. Yeah. They were like, just come on the meeting. Like, calm down. Yeah. Um, but still, so, it's like, you need yeah. to know. So many people just, like, don't tell you, like, yes. what is going on. They don't realize that, like, oh, I have a life and a family. And yeah, a and, like, and, and that's the thing. So I had it then. So they were like, all right. So they told me Thursday, like, we leave Sunday. I'm like, N you guys might. I can't. Right. Like, I have to go to work and, like, tell my school, like, remember that resignation? I'm taking it. I had to set my kids up for everything. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I got two little kids. 
So they tell us nothing about the show except that it's for a network that rhymes with Chex Mix. So I was able to figure out. Oh, wow, the whole um, time. Yeah. So <laughs> then they tell us like, be yourself. I took be myself as just be myself. So I wore like all my like standard issue New York clothes. Like I wore jeans, Tim's, like, yeah. you know, white Nike uptowns. Everybody, we stand at the edge of this cliff. This is how it starts. We were blindfolded in the car going there. So I didn't even know what the show was about till. Did you I, know where you were going? No, I knew nothing. Nothing. So how do then, you, how do you like, oh, I guess you have to trust them. Yes, that okay. was something they would say. So then like I get to the edge of this cliff now and then I take my blindfold off. Like I've seen enough movies where I thought I was about to die. So I'm like, oh shit, like <laughs> this was just a big ruse to get me to the Dominican Republic to kill me. And I'm the first one. So now I go down this mountain and I'm standing at the edge of a cliff with Brooke Baldwin, who was the host. She was a CNN anchor for Oh a long yeah, time. I love Brooke Baldwin. Yeah, super sweet. Yeah. And it's just me and Brooke Baldwin at the edge of a cliff. And she's like, hi, Gasper. I'm like, Hey, yeah. I was like, I don't know why. Loved we're... you during COVID, bro. Yeah, well, I was like, I don't know why I'm here because yeah. no one else was there. And then all of a sudden, like person after person comes, and it's like, were you the first person? So I was the, the first, 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 just first. standing there, and she like, <laughs> and then the next, so I'm in jeans and a t-shirt. They said wear your best outfit. It was my best t-shirt because I have like a really like a good t-shirt that I wear for everything important. So it, I'm wearing it right now. Oh, um, that's no, the shirt. <laughs> this is my second best. Um, <laughs> so. Then um, I'm standing at the cliff. Then, like, the next girl comes down. She's, like, this African queen, uh -huh. like, in full African traditional garb. Then, like, the next guy's, like, a cowboy in full cowboy clothes. So I was like, what the fuck is this show? Because then I was like, all right, maybe they took people from, like, all walks. So I'm trying to— It's called It's a Small World. Yes, <laughs> and I'm literally sitting there trying to figure it out. And, like, the first girl's like, I'm from Africa. I'm this, that. The second guy's like, I'm a cowboy. I'm like, uh, I'm just from New York. Like, yeah. I don't know why I'm here— and so, and then they're like, hey, there's 11 of you in the house. This is the premise I was getting to. You're fine. So there's 11 of you in the house and they're like, you, every night there's going to be a voting ceremony. You don't have to ever vote. So there's no voting. If you don't want to vote, you don't have to vote, but everybody goes down to cast a vote, but it's up to you if you want to vote or not. That's the original. So there's a vault with $250,000 in it. It stays two hundred fifty thousand. If the game ends with eleven people, we split two hundred fifty thousand oh. dollars. If it ends with one person, they get a you know however many people mm -hmm. split the money. Now, in a perfect world, everybody's like, we could split it. We could be friends and make it work. Because like in my head, I was like, I'm just happy to be here. If I leave with twenty two thousand dollars, that's pretty good. But. What they do is then there's a vault underneath the house. And what you would do is like, so we would have like these challenges and they were like fucked up challenges. It yeah. would be like, rank yourselves from funniest to least. And then like everybody's together and they're like, oh, like Justin, you're funny. You go to the front. You're not that funny. Everyone laughs. Oh, rate yourself most stylish to least. They're like, Gasper, your style sucks. Go to the end. I'm like, okay. We He's got one shirt. Yeah. <laughs> he bought one pair of sneakers for a month and I wore them to the beach. That's I didn't bring flip flops. I didn't know. Sand in the shoes. Yeah. I didn't know. So I, so they, they, and then they'd be like, rank yourselves from most trustworthy to least. And now you have like 10 people being like, we trust you the least. Get to the end of the line. So it causes like a lot of deception. So they villainize you. you. Everyone got villainized in different ways. And then like they would do like these activities. Like everyone draw a card. Whoever has the highest card goes into the vault. Now we go into the vault and they'll give you like two options. It'll be like option one, take $10,000 out of the vault. That's yours. But one player starts with one vote next game or double the money, put 20,000 back into the vault and you walk, you know, you walk out with nothing guaranteed, but 20,000 goes into the, like, basically if you took the selfish option, there was a negative consequence. Yeah. If you took the non-selfish, there was a positive and no one knew what you did when you were in the vault. So people would go in the vault and make these decisions and take money or whatever. And then like they would make an announcement like three days later, whereas in like five people already went in the vault, they'd be like, there's 400,000 in the vault. And you're like, oh, cool. Or they'd be like, there's 180,000. And everybody would leave being like, I put the money back. I put the money back. But so you can't trust. So you can't, you don't know who actually put money back, who did. Ooh. And then when the voting would happen, Ooh. this is how the voting worked. Like the voting was the most tense thing. If I went down to the cliff, if I said, Justin, if you were the only person that was said the whole voting ceremony, you're out. That's it. So if you have one vote on you, you're out. Mm -hmm. Now, you knowing that might go down and be like, well, what if 
Gasper was mad at me and just threw a vote at me. Uh -huh. I'm going to just put one vote on him. And then everyone's now just putting votes on each other. Ugh. So, like, I don't want to ruin and say what happened because you should watch the show. But it creates a very tense, like, because every, every voting ceremony, we'd be like, I'm not going to vote. No one's going to vote. No one's going to vote. And then, and then they'd be, be like, like, everyone's voting. Eight people voted. And uh, you're like, what the what? fuck? Yeah, I like, we had, like, and, breakfast. And, yeah, and then, like, that's the awkward part. Like, I never realized, like, with these shows, like, you know, when you watch a reality show, like, it's like, oh, it's all, everyone's just, like, peachy and hanging out. Like, after a voting ceremony where I attempted to get you out and wasn't able to, and now we have to sit there and just eat breakfast, and it's like... Yeah. Hey, remember when you wanted me out of the house, but yeah. I survived? And you have to well, play it cool because and, it ruins your strategy. And and then, like, you see, like, the paradigm of, like, one minute you're best friends, the next you hate each other. One, you know, and, like, I spent more time in this house with these people than I did with my own family. You know what I mean? Like, you're together from, like, 7 in the morning till midnight all day, every day, Ugh. only talking to each other only interacting with each other. So it's a lot, you know? So there's 11 people and you're in like this big house. We're in this big house, but you all share rooms together. How many bathrooms? Is there poopery? Oh, right. It'd be grossed out. Yes. They, I want to know. I've always seen like these big they, brother shows mm -hmm. and like I need to know what the bathroom situation is. Okay, so is. every room, so there was four bedrooms to split amongst 11 people. So every room had like three people, two people, whatever. Yeah. Everyone had their own private bathroom, own shower that you shared with the people in your room. Uh-huh. But the toilet paper, for some reason, even though this was like a billionaire's house, you weren't allowed to flush toilet paper down the toilet because it would clog the pipes because the pipes in Dominican Republic aren't ready for <laughs> shit. I don't know. So you had to- I'm paralyzed. A, I'm paralyzed. You had to wipe and put it in a garbage bag in the bathroom. Uh. So like you would do like your first wipe and flush it and be like, good luck to the pipes. But like the second and third, you'd, you'd like were trying to be conscious of the pipes clogging because some nights they would clog because people would flush stuff and then the bathrooms would back up. And this was, I can't say whose house, but it was a multi, multi, multi billionaire. Billionaire? Billion, billion, billion. Jeff Bezos. Not him, but along those lines. Zuckerberg. <laughs> he was the neighbor's house. Zuckerberg was the neighbor. Elon Musk. Also lives on that block. I mean, the show should be called The Trust, colon, The Toilets. <laughs> trust the toilets. Trust the toilet. I, I'm sorry. If you can't trust the pipes, yeah, what are I, we doing in this house? I just found it crazy. Like, this guy's got literally enough money to repipe the Dominican Republic, mm -hmm. but he can't flush his toilet paper? Mm. So it's the one percent. Yeah, <laughs> they don't care in a two ply world. So, but yeah, it was cool though. I mean, the whole experience was fun. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's like surreal looking back. Like I'm like, oh, like that whole month of my life is just like blurred. You know, like being <laughs> filmed twenty four seven. Like even so, I know you like bathroom stuff. Even if you have to go to the bathroom, you're filmed. So like on, like you'll say into your mic, be like. Hi, like, I ate a lot of rice and beans before. Like, I'm going to go to the bathroom if you want to shut my mic. And you have no idea if you're on or off. And then Oh, my God. In the bathroom. So, like, you'd, like, cover your mic, but they were so sensitive. It could pick up anything. So, like, that kind of sucked. Oh. Also, at night, like, I'd be getting dressed, and there was, like, 39, like, roving cameras around my room. That's terrifying. So I'd be, like, getting dressed, and I'd be like, hey, what's up to the camera? Because you know people are on the other yeah. side. So they would, like, take the cameras and move them to look the opposite way. So I would get in front of it again. I'd be like, I think you're trying to get away from me. Good for I'm you. I'm still here. Good for I you. I wasn't, like, naked. I'm not trying I to. I would have been like, be oh, TV you want TV. this? Is this what you want? Well, you know yeah. what's funny? You don't even know who's on the other side. So That's you have true. And then at the end, like on the, when it's over and everything, like 400 people came out from the other side and they're like, we've been watching you all day, every day. And I'm like, wow, that's kind of wild. This is an A24 movie. It was creepy. Like the, the film 24-7 is wild. Like, but at night, once you took your mic off, you weren't filmed, like you could sleep. Allegedly that you know no, about. You were filmed and you weren't mic'd. Though. Ugh. Was it that weird like night vision where you're like yes. asleep? Yeah. And then, like, let's say, like, our beds were next to each other and I wanted to talk to you at night, but I wasn't mic'd. As soon as I start talking, they'd come running in and be like, we see you guys talking, stop talking, because they didn't want, like, people making strategy at night in the dark. I would be Emily Blunt in a quiet place. <laughs> I would just be like... Okay, so I actually know sign language. See? And it turned out that one of the guys... Perfect. ...knew sign language. So we were signing each other and they actually asked us to stop. That? He said it was an unfair advantage because...
because the they weren't able to pick up like what we were saying. That's ASLophobic. <laughs> take it up with the that. Well, no, 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 no. <laughs> hey, no, no, no. No fingers. No fingers. Like they were like, you know, just voices. They were like, we can't like, you know, figure oh, oh, out what okay, you guys you? are doing. Oh, well, that's but then I guys. said, I was like, well, what if we spoke Spanish to each other? And they were like, well, we have people here who speak Spanish. But they had no ASL interpreters. They didn't. Wow. They and they also said that if we had told them that we both knew sign language prior, they would have set up like a little something where we could have done it more, but because we didn't tell them, but we didn't know, I didn't know he knew. Well, I'm very excited. When did this come out? Uh, January 10th. Okay, so if you need a summer reality show. And it's like a quick watch. It's a fun good. watch. It's interesting. Yeah, it sounds really, really fun. And um, we'll be rooting you on. I don't know. What's I don't know. Are we? Ugh. Maybe I'm out in the first episode. Oh, no. Maybe I'm the villain. I mean, I just think it's funny because I feel like you were either trafficked or you were on a reality show. <laughs> well, you know what's It could either be one or the other. Like, while I was there, I was literally thinking to myself, like... Am I, I on a show? <laughs> no idea what this even is. Like... <laughs> Will I see my family like, again? No, like, you knew nothing. Like, I just was <laughs> like... I made, like, videos for my kids like I was in a hostage situation. Oh and I was like, I love you guys so much. Watch this when I'm dead. <laughs> Play this at Daddy's going to be on Netflix, I promise. Like, I feel like if there's an actual kidnapping victim and they're like, ah, oh, it's just a reality show. And they're like, no, you're in Siberia. <laughs> but underground. this is part of the show. Yeah. Well, and that was another thing they put in our heads. They were like, well, maybe we're not filming in the Dominican Republic. Maybe this is start, torture. Maybe it starts there. And I was like, what the f starts there? I was like, where does it end? Because all I'm bringing is shorts. You know what I mean? It's like that It's like that Michael Douglas movie, The Game. I'm where like, it. oh, you have to watch it. It's yeah, so I good. suck at TV. Oh, no, it's like, it's a movie from like, it's I want to say like late 90s where it's like everyone... He's like, in everyone's a player in, in this guy's life. Kind of like the Truman yeah, Show, yeah. but like very, don't ask what the Truman Show is. I've seen that. Okay, good. Last week for the first time. Good, last week kidding. for the first time. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. I had time, I watched it. Good. It was great. Good. I was always wondering what it it's was about. It's like that. It's like, it's like everyone's a key player. There's like games, but you're like, am I in a game? What, yeah, what is being played? That's how I felt. Like, what's crazy is like, whenever we would think we'd figure something out, you have to remember, like the producers are on the other side of the camera and they're like, whenever you think you figured it out, you guys are playing checkers. We're playing chess. So like, as soon as you figure it out, we're switching it up because we're on the other side and we control the board. You know what I mean? And I was yes. like, so like, that's why I was signing so much because I was like, I figured it out. Like where we do this, 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 we get out alive. Well, I can't wait to watch. I can't like wait my, to see how You know, it's funny. Out. My son's friends all tell him oh, your dad was on a TV show and he's seven and he's adorable. So he'll say things like, dad, like we were driving and a guy went like this, like waved us to go. So I was like, thank you. And I drove and he goes, dad, I know why he let you go. And I was like, why? And he's like, because you're on a TV show. Uh, he's like, you're famous. Uh, I'm like, no, Gath, people are nice. Some people are just nice. And he's like, but you're, it's because you're famous, right? My friends told me you're on the trust. Uh, you're the truster. I'm like, yeah, that's me. And then your Trust son her. turned on Gasolina in the car, <laughs> and it just... He's like, my dad's a Netflix comedian! Benny Punk Gasolina! Yep. Oh, uh, that's great. That's a really cool story. Yeah, so, like, it's weird, because my own kids don't have any interest in it, but, like, other people's kids probably watch it. Good, good, good. Well, yeah. that's a wonderful story. I can't wait to see it. Yeah, it's cool. Um, it's and cool. I, I want to get into some stories with you. Do you have a fat pet who needs to take Ozempic? Okay, so number one, I can't take an Ozempic needle in yeah. my own body. I have to, if I get a needle, I look the other way. Like sure. if I have I, to take a shot. Same thing. I got an IV oh, the other day God. and I ju I'm just like, just do it. Do it. Can you draw blood? No. I mean, yeah. I mean, if I, I'm not if I have looking, to. I, yeah. I'm not looking. I'm just like, and it's not like a fear of needles no, or anything it's... like that. I'm just like, I don't want to see it. Yeah. I don't want to see it. I feel so bad because like I hold my kids down. I'm like, guys, it's nothing. It's, it's nothing. nothing. And then I'm I like, I don't want to look. I'm like, oh my God, it's yeah. in her arm. I'm looking the other way for my daughter. That's a lot in a tube. Yeah, that like, is a lot in a tube. Like, you're done. You're done. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a new way to get blood now, right? They do with kids. It's a finger prick, but it like pricks like. Like, I don't know that, I don't know how that God. just explained it, but yeah. it's like multiple pricks and it's like, and then they squeeze and a lot, enough blood comes out that they can test it. Okay. So they don't have to like draw blood from kids anymore. It's pretty good. Well, I tried to have them do it to me, but they were like, they're like, you're an adult. You're a fucking adult. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you're not on the kids menu, sir. I was like, you get the, you get the adult portion of chicken fingers. Okay. Um, so Ozempic needle. So number, obviously I know what Ozempic is. Yeah. I, I actually know a girl who's buying like before Ozempic was like, is it legal? 
Yeah. Oh, I, before it was like it was FDA like, approved. It was like taboo for a second. Yeah, she was like buying it like back yeah, alley. It was like big. commercials now. Oh, back alley. Yeah, she was getting it like from a dealer. Work. Yeah, I don't know what kind of dealer. A Zempic dealer? A Zempic dealer. Well, this is a... Uh, he was just like a big guy who's now little. <laughs> yeah. First shot's free. Who was the guy who gave it to you? I don't know. It's a totally different person <laughs> now. He could look like anyone. Yeah. Um, well, this is um, the new trend that's sweeping the nation. Um, this headline says, Hefty pets may benefit from ozempic style drugs, an expert says. Um, it says, Ozempic, the wonder drug helping people shed troves of excess weight, may soon have a counterpart available for chunky cats and dogs as pharmaceutical companies are racing to develop a product pets can use. A recent small sample study from the startup Okava Pharmaceuticals found out that an appetite regulator sim similar to Ozempic helped cats shed 5% of their body weight in just under four months. So when it comes to dogs, however, small animal obesity expert Alex German recently told The Telegraph that new pet-friendly Ozempic-style drugs would succeed as a preventative measure instead of treating existing conditions like diabetes. Here's my thing. Yeah. If you're a pet, mm -hmm. isn't your whole existence to be in shape? Is like, it? Because you don't work. Like, I mean, what stops me from being in shape? My kids, my job, life no will like to look better like but for a dog like you have none of that your whole life is just let me run from this living room to the dining room well i feel like so dogs like, are more so i feel like fat cats are more of a thing not because they just rhyme but i feel like <laughs> we that, always see like garfield yeah, and like no. these like i eat lasagna like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not that cats really do eat lasagna. Some, I mean, italian I'm, cats yeah, italian cats sicily <laughs> yes yeah, sicilian cats <laughs> i mean i guess it's good but it doesn't cure diabetes so it's just to get them in shape well a lot of people are also warning that obesity in dogs and cats is often a reflection of how pet owners treat their own bodies which makes sense. a lot of that. people say that like the, the owners kind of look like their dogs or they kind of morph into their dogs, whatever. But I get that. But also we have, there's like competitions for fat cats and fat dogs. You know what I mean? Where they're like, oh, look at my yeah, fat. There's also a competition for cute dog and tiny. Cute dog and ugly dog. Well, this, uh, the Association for Pet Obesity Prevention found in 2022 that 61% of, of cats and 59% of dogs are overweight. So, I don't know. That's Maybe if we Where have... Did they find that study? Did they ask everybody? I don't know. A lot of these things, I'm just like, is this just like a... Fa like 59% yeah. of dogs? Hmm. I always think of like Steve Harvey and like Family Feud where yeah, it's like... Yeah, we surveyed 100 people. Did you? They were all here in this audience right now. Did you? I think Family Feud is just getting so filthy these days. I like it though. I do too. I like Steve Harvey. I, I just love find Steve his Harvey. reactions great. I just think, I just feel like sometimes, and I always just love like when a grandma is just like, in my butt. And you're yeah. like, what? Nana. The titties. They just yeah. scream it out of nowhere. Yeah. And you're like, but now that's like a thing. You know, they're doing it for, like, shock value, probably. I do, I do love that. But I, go ahead. No, I was going to say about the owners looking. So my grandmother, she was, a, like, a heavy set Italian woman, and her cat was a, a big cat, and she used to make it pot. Whatever she made, she made a bowl of it for the cat. Oh, my God. And, like, God. if she ordered, like, I remember once we ordered, like, not sub, but, you know, like, a, a from a, a hero place, a sandwich place. And uh, we got all these heroes delivered, and my grandma ordered a, a hero for the cat. And she's like, he'll pick at it. He loves ham and cheese. And, like, <laughs> his cat was just down there eating, like, Italian bread with, like, balsamic glaze. Like, you know, so, and he was a big cat, and my grandma was a bigger lady. You know what I mean? And did the cat pass away? Yeah, but the thing was like a monster. It was yeah. huge. Did it die because it was like fucking Gilbert Grape's mom? <laughs> no, I don't know. I mean, but like once a cat? my grandma died, like no one wanted the cat. And then it like bounced around yeah. from like person like, to person. It was like a mini tiger. Yeah, we can't get the cat out of the house. Just <laughs> set it on fire and walk away. Yeah, I don't uh, remember. But the cat, I don't know. But I do. I, I don't remember. I feel like if humans can have it, I feel like people feed their animals, you know, cat human nip. food. Oh. Give it. Ozempic. But like, you know? isn't catnip like a drug for a cat? Absolutely. You ever watch a cat on catnip? Yes. That's and like when I walked here from the Netflix building with the people. Yeah. The, the cats just... are just laying there tweaking. Oh, yeah. So like, we give people heroin, we give cats Do we even nip. know what catnip is? Heroin. It's, well, it's not fentanyl. Like... <laughs> Ketamine. <laughs> it's, all the, it's all the drugs. It's petanol. <laughs> it's just... But I do want to talk about... Um, 
dogs looking like their owners. Tori Spelling reacts to fans saying that she looks like Wendy Williams and a white chick's character. Now, um... A white I, chick's character. Yeah, yeah, just one of them. Um, Tori Spelling is the one on the left. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that clarification. <laughs> And Wendy, oh, Wendy, poor Wendy. Did you watch? She's going through a lot right now. Did you watch the documentary? I did not. No, it's, but it I, was a lot. And doesn't she talk bad about Tori in it? Does she? I can't even remember. I was just too, like, thrown back by, like, how, like, ugh, the, the dwindling of her. Wendica Williams was. Uh, she is, uh, Tori Spelling read and reacted to some of her most common comments in the latest episode of her Misspelling podcast. She's taking all of the commentary and criticism surrounding her looks in stride. The 51-year-old Beverly Hills 90210 no star addressed some of her most common comments head on on the latest episode. She says, you guys can ask me anything. You can say anything. Pretty thick skin here, the mother of five shared. I do read the comments. Look at me. I'm human. I can feel them, but I can also have a good sense of humor about them. During the episode, a producer read out a comment saying she looks like a white Wendy Williams. <laughs> In response to the comparison to the popular talk show host, Spelling said, so a lot of people have written, okay, it was just one person. So a lot of people have written that comment and I actually think Wendy Williams is very pretty. She hasn't been very kind to me in the past. Maybe so uh, on the documentary, but she is a pretty woman and I feel bad for her situation, but I feel like commenting on that, you'll never be able to unsee it. Okay. She Wait, says, she's saying you'll never be able to unsee that she looks like Wendy? I guess so. She says uh, she didn't get it at first saying once that comment was made, I was like, huh? And then I was like, oh, can and see that. Oh, I get it. Yeah. yeah. So, so she also Similar brought up... Cheekbones. I get it. She also brought up a regular comparison she receives, which is that of comedians Marlon Wayans and Sean Wayans <laughs> in the 2004 movie White Chicks, where the two black men play undercover cops posing as white women. Fair. She looks like Marlon and Sean Wayans in disguise in the movie White Chicks, and I'm like, fair, she said in response. Now, At least she has a good sense of humor about it. I guess it. so, and I get this version better than Wendy. <laughs> I don't know. I kind of see Wendy more. I see Wendy and a little bit of the chin and the and the and the cheeks, but also it's like I feel like this never happens with men, or does it? Well, I'll tell we don't you ever say like, oh, that guy looks like so and so and so. Like when Zac Efron like dislocated his jaw. Do you remember that? No. Nah. He like fell and like got like a completely new jaw because he was like healing. It was like wired and everything. People are like, what did he do? his face and of course like now it's like healing and stuff but no one's ever like I don't feel like guys are doing that to other guys they always well, do this to just women I'll tell you this so after the show came out right Netflix told me they were like hey get ready because like the internet is filled with assholes you know yeah. what I mean and like I was prepared for it just from having social media presence before whatever you know but like it is kind of wild like i remember like i would just like refresh my name when the show was like at its height it was like number two on netflix so i would just like type my name refresh it and there'd be like 30 new articles or twitter or uh -huh. reddit you know and it was kind of yeah. cool and like 99 percent of it was pretty positive for me thank god but i remember one comment it was great it was like so now like okay you see my hair right my head it was like I love when the show does high camera angles so you could see where Gasper's hairline receded to. Oh, and I was like, oh, <laughs> thanks, Dick. I would jump off. I was like, that's what you love about the show? Yeah. You asshole. <laughs> Someone did say, I look, I give off Alan from the Barbie movie vibes, which I <laughs> which guess- Which one was like, Alan? The loser. Oh. Um, not Ken. Um, so I was like, oh, that's okay. Um, a lot of people, and I've gotten this comparison for years, say I look like Nick Miller- from the show New Girl, Jake Johnson. Do you know who he is? Oh, that's Alan Michaels. That one? Yeah. Uh, if you look up uh, Jake Johnson from New Girl, I, and I could see it. I completely see the resemblance. I get this comment constantly on every single video I post. Oh. Because, like, his mannerisms, or I get Charlie Day from Always Sunny. Okay, I could see that one. Where, like, that, so, like, every comment, people always compare. But they're not, like... One one comment was like, I see this one, like especially in that like the gray suit right there. I could see that one. Yeah, I, he's not like a bad looking guy at all. No, he's average looking. Yeah, and, and Charlie Day. I see Charlie Day more actually. Well, Charlie Day a lot more because like that mannerisms, the mm -hmm. voice, like because mm -hmm. he plays Luigi in the Mario movie. I don't know if you saw it. Oh, the animated one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so fun. Yeah, I loved it. Loved I've seen it, it four hundred times. Yeah. Um, 
my kids think that I'm Luigi. Oh, what a great because thing we to have, have like similar voices. Uh -huh. So they think that I filmed and I was Luigi. So like my son tells people that. So is that like do you, do you guys play video games together and stuff? Are you always yeah, Luigi? Yeah, yeah, of course. I'm well, always no, Peach. I'm, you're always who? Peach. Yeah. Peach is that bitch. No, she's cool. She's great in the yeah. games. She's the only one. But um, I don't know. I just feel like this is kind of a uh yeah, again, like I like that Tori is just kind of like get, whatever. What is I mean, listen, she's been in the she public looks like eye. Randy Williams. She's been in the public eye for 40 years. Yeah. So like if this is the worst thing they're gonna say about you, that's not mm -hmm. horrible. Wendy Williams, not like she's like, oh, you look like a crackhead. Right. You know what I mean? Like Wendy Williams is a pretty woman. Yeah. Well, I always get that I look like Chris Pratt. No. Oh. Uh, really? I can see it. No. Do you guys see Chris Pratt? Do you hear the silence? It was I don't know what Chris Pratt looks like. No. <laughs> what? Do you not? I was like, <laughs> no, there's no, 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 no. Uh, I don't look like this. I do all right, not you don't look, like look like this. I was thinking him as like no. when he looked cooler. Okay. Thank you. No. I <laughs> When he was better looking. I look, this is who I get. Patrick Swayze. Uh, I've gotten that one. I can see that. Like a young one. We're going to Google that one. Hold, please. <laughs> I've heard of him. Yeah. But like, like. Uh, yeah, he's a good looking guy. He's so hot. So I'll take it. <laughs> and then the second one is Martha Plimpton, which. <laughs> who? Who? Martha Plimpton from Goonies. So I get told that I look like Martha Plimpton. <laughs> from, who, like, yes. Who that, has ever told you you look like Martha? Uh, you would be Plimpton. surprised. People Martha, have actually stopped you and said yeah. you look like the cop from Goonies. Yeah. From, look, she was. She was. Well, she's. <laughs> She's a badass bitch. She was in one of my favorite movies called 200 Cigarettes. Like this actually, I mean, yeah, this, she looks like me as a child. And if I was a, like, just say a woman in the world, I would be her. She was dating River Phoenix at one point. She's just a badass bitch. All right. And we see it. Listen, I'd rather be Martha Plinton than Sloth. Thank you. <laughs> so That was before I went to the Turkish surgeon and got a full face. That's what I looked like. But yeah. She has one of my favorite lines from Goonies. She says, I feel like I'm babysitting, but I'm not getting paid. It's my favorite thing. I haven't seen Goonies in probably 25 uh, years. Did you know there's a Goonies speakeasy in Orange County that like I just saw on Instagram where it's like, everyone loves a speakeasy. So they're like, oh, we have like a theme bar, you know? And it's yeah, like, yeah. okay, cool. But this one's like a piratey grotto vibe. And I'm That's like, cool. do I want to go to Orange County to drink? How far is Orange County from here? It's like about an hour. Oh, that's not, that's worth it. If you're a Goonies fanatic, but people I mean, will be like, right. oh my God, is that Martha? Like, <laughs> <laughs> you'll stop the whole I bar. just put on a blonde wig and like <laughs> put on glasses. I'm like, hey guys, it's me, the new Jam Brady. <laughs> I yeah. work here. Oh, I would love it. So yes, Tori, you go on and look like Wendy Williams and, a, and one of the white chicks. I'll live my Martha Plimpton life. <laughs> Um, we have, let's see, we got, next up we have this woman. Saw, this did you crazy. see this story? Yeah. So this woman was arrested for falsely reporting uh, a crime after she called the cops and fabricated a story in order to get out of a first date. Sumaya Thomas, 18, scheduled a romantic evening. First of all, if you're 18, yeah, that don't schedule a romantic weird. evening. When I saw her age, this whole story changed. Yes. I was like, now he's picking sense. you up from your parents' house. Yeah. Like, which is fine, but like, I don't know. Everything about that, what, the age threw me off. Cause yeah. like, I teach 18 year olds. I'm just thinking, like, are you, what, are you what on a romantic date, date are website you going to McDonald's? Yeah. Like, also, your name's very similar to the girl from The Ring. I don't like it. Um, <laughs> scheduled a romantic evening with a stranger she had matched with on a dating app. You're 18 and on a dating app. Stop it. But when he arrived at her doorstep on June 16th, she suddenly got cold feet. And what? Co uh, called the cops. <laughs> the North Liberty, Iowa woman told officers that the man was an abusive ex who was threatening to cause her physical harm, according to an affidavit pertaining to the bizarre case. Thomas, who also... Also, mm, these articles, I swear. Thomas, who also, just one, falsely claimed she was pregnant with the man's child, said he planned to hit, punch, kick, and stab her. When officers arrived at the scene, the man informed them that they had only met Thomas via a dating app approximately one week before, providing officials with proof of messages between the pair. So, oh. <laughs> It all makes sense. 
A lot of people say you look like her. I get <laughs> Samoa, you know. Samoa, you know. The conversation showed he was being honest and he really did just meet this female. I don't understand this. What part? I don't want to be mean, but... You're about to. <laughs> just being honest. She's on a date. She's getting a date. You met this... I, I call catfish. What? You think she didn't look like that? Oh, you think she realized... I think it was... I think she had a fake profile. The guy showed and up. And I think this guy showed up at her door. No, nah, because that would have all been in there then. Is it? Let's continue reading. Does there anything? She just says she got cold feet meeting him. Do we have a picture of the guy? No. He He's left out because of... Uh, so... He was left out of it because he didn't want to be involved. Like uh -huh. once they once they cleared it up and he's like, "Look, we met. These are our conversations. Like we're literally saying, can't wait to meet you." How's this girl saying? But would you uh, admit to getting catfished to the police? Yes, I you would. Hell yeah, I'd be like, if she's saying that I'm gonna beat her up, but the guy went to jail. Uh -huh. He did go to jail for an hour. The guy went to jail for, for an hour. And, well, because they had to, you know, take it serious. Oh. But once it was like proven, nothing happened. He didn't get an arrest, but he was like held in the jail. He was detained for more than an hour. The report claims hour. that she didn't think officers would help her, so she made up this call and all the events that she described. So pretty much, she is catfishing him without it, like a without a. Uh, a visual catfish, like, but she's making up this whole story about him. Here's the thing, like dating app. Like, first off, I, I like I wish dating apps were a thing when before they were never a thing. Never. Me. Like, no, I'm saying like. Oh, before you got I, married. I got married yeah. at 25. I got married uh, young. Yeah. And dating apps really weren't popular 11 years ago. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, of course. And I was with my wife for four years prior, so like. I wish there were dating apps. I would have been on one at 18 just for the hell of it. Yeah. But, like, my friends who were on them, like, my friend says all the time, like, he'll, like, say to a girl, oh, yeah, let's meet. Then she shows up. She looks nothing like the picture. Ugh. Like, and he's, like, it's super common. So, but he's, like, kind of a jerk about it. Like, he's, like, one time I was in a bar. The girl texted me. She's, like, I'm here. He's, like, I looked up. She looked nothing like the picture. He goes, yeah. So I just made my way out the bar and I left. Yeah. So he's, like, and she was, like, fuck you. You're an asshole, blah, blah, blah. And he's, like, you lied about the way you looked, so yeah. I don't have to I don't, stay. I don't owe you like, anything. He's like, you know, it works both ways. One time, this is just messed up. He, like, went on a date with this girl. They hooked up in a hotel room, and he's like, oh, I'm going to go downstairs and get a sandwich. It was, like, 4 in the morning. He goes, so I'm downstairs. I'm getting a sandwich. He's like, all of a sudden, I'm eating the sandwich on the corner, and a bus pulled up thinking that I was trying to get on the bus. He goes, and I don't know. I just got on the bus and just left. And he's, I'm like, wait, what? And he's like, yeah, I just left. And he's like, all my shit was still in the hotel. So the girl, after like an hour, was like, hey, where are you? And he's like, I left. And he's like, you could just leave all my stuff. Like, it's fine. Wow. Like, You're an asshole. And he's like, it's a dating app. Like, I'm not here to marry you. Like, it was a hookup. I know. He's like, we, we went on a date to a hotel. He's like, what? What was did you this? think was going like, to happen? Like, you know, and he's like, and like the bus was there. And he's like, I just got on it. Yeah. <laughs> I've done that before where I, Went to I went to New York and it was like mm. just got right on the bus. No, I went to I went over to this guy's house and like stayed with him and then I was like I I don't want to be here anymore and I flew home. You should call the cops on him. That's crazy Wait, though. You flew home? Yeah. Do is he waiting for you to come back? No, I just said I'm going home. Oh, I thought you were like I'll be right back. No, I at least was like Hey, I'm gonna leave. That's nice. But like you took your that's, stuff. I didn't have to be like. Well, also, he's, like, a klepto and, like, stole, like, Leah Michelle's like, coat from Les Mis and, like, had it on his wall. And I was like, I have to get out of here. No, that's he was, like, weird. one of those, like, crazy musical theater people. Yeah, I would have been nervous. He's dead now. Uh -oh. um, uh -oh. But, like, it was... <laughs> It was uh, it was just a lot. I don't understand like the extreme of like making up a pregnancy. Like he's abusive. Yeah, because like, that's like ruined someone's life. That's like, insane. Like I would just think you would be like, hey, you know what? I'm not feeling this. Like bye. And then like you know, go fuck yourself. You know, okay, sure, get it out, yeah. whatever. But like calling the police. Like I'm wondering, did they charge her for like? Yeah, she got arrested. She did get arrested. For, like, I was going to say, wasting resources. our time, bitch. Yeah, like his time. Yeah. God. Yeah, she did get in trouble, which she deserved it. Yeah, I, I get it. Um, you know who did not get arrested is Elton John. Elton John was um 
He allegedly peed in a bottle in a store. And you know what? Let him. He's Elton John. Let the man piss in a store. Elton John couldn't hold it while shopping for sneakers over in France and ended up pissing in a plastic bottle in the middle of the store. Yeah. Goodbye, Yellow Brick Road. Um, (laughs) (laughs) He came into the shop on Monday afternoon with his two sons and a bodyguard and asked if there was a public restroom. When Elton was told there wasn't a toilet around... Um, the shop owner says the singer turned to his security, asked for a bottle, then took a few steps away from other shoppers and began taking a leak in the receptacle. He was probably about to piss himself. And they no have a bathroom. No kidding. They have a bathroom there. I mean, give me a break. Wait for it. Where do the employees go? Sounds like Elton John has uh, poor aim. We're told he got some pee on the floor and asked the security for a towel to clean it up. All right, that's nice. He could have just left it. That is a yellow brick road now. Uh, This shop (laughs) owner says he was shocked and frustrated a customer would take a tinkle like that, and this was a first in his three years running the business. Not that long. I mean, my God. (laughs) Seriously. You got a little pee on your floor? Yeah, you're making eye contact with people taking shits on the sidewalk. You know, Elton John can pee in a lady footlocker. Let him. Um, seems Elton really had Ryan's head spinning. He says he had no idea who EJ was when this all was going down. And when he asked Elton what he did for a living, the singer simply responded, I'm Elton John. Hmm. I mean, it would have been great if the guy was like, who? Well, that would have been Justin Timberlake's cop. (laughs) You know, it's like, (laughs) it's like, who are you? I'm Justin Timberlake. Who? Um... Let's see. Ryan says that he did a quick search online, and that's when he realized this was a huge deal. In the end, we're told Elton bought two pairs of sneakers for his son, snapped a picture for the store, mm. and shook hands with Ryan before leaving. Hopefully before or after he washed Yeah, but hands. when? Because if there's no bathroom. Oh, no word if he used his pee hand. They, oh. I know. No word if he used his pee hand during the salutation, but there was no mention of the PP incident. What are these pictures? These are just celebrity, celebrity toilet selfies. They're like, how does like Nick us. Cannon have time to shit with all those kids? Yeah, this. I, I'm surprised your picture is not up here from the Dominican Republic. <laughs> just like, please, because you didn't know there was a camera in the doorknob that you were using. Honestly, I don't blame Elton John. You actually use the bathroom. We have a uh, celebrity who has joined OnlyFans, and that is Lily Allen. So it's OnlyFans, but feet. Yes, right? so she that, has joined OnlyFans. Did you see that big sign about OnlyFans when you're walking from the Netflix studios to here? I don't walk from <laughs> the Netflix studios it's, to here. It's at, you guys know what I'm yeah, talking about? It's at, it's at Sunset and Highland. Yeah, what it says... It? Well, you live over there. What is it? It says, cancel your OnlyFans, save our community, oh. bring back love and families, right? They, that, I remember when they put it up, they had this big, like, uh, uh, there was people with signs and stuff. It was like this big um, thing. That it is, it's like cancel your only fans. It's anti family. Yes. It's like, yeah, it's breaking oh up family. If anything, I think it's helping families. Well, maybe not have like your, you know, dad or mom on only fans. I don't know. Maybe. But it's helping them if they need the money. If they need the money. Yes. Yeah. There's a woman who like bought Christmas presents like for her kids and Matt Reif like called her a hoe and it was like the little kid heard it and like ruined him. Um, but yeah, so this is the. Uh, yeah, so she has joined OnlyFans with just her feet, which I think that's fine. Now, as a straight man, are you... Not in- even remotely interested. Like, <laughs> the thought of feet, they, they do absolutely nothing for me. Same. I, I don't... I can't even that imagine... That is the bridge between straight and gay, I think. <laughs> yeah, we just solved it. We just it. did it. I don't get it. I never understood it. Not even remotely. I, I, I don't get it. They don't do it. Are you going to touch my thing with your foot? Which is fine, I guess, but like... There it is. Well, no, I meant like it's fine if you touch it, but I don't want your toes near me. It's I'm not, not like a toe person. It's not like in your search history. For, no, yeah, no, I don't. I don't. That's cleared. I. <laughs> <laughs> what's Joe's Pornhub uh, account? Not Gasper. What's what's Joe's? Nah, um, he just it, it boggles my mind. That, I don't like, get it. So I will tell you this. Okay, so. <laughs> my, I get a lot of messages from guys, a lot of guys who want to see my feet. Really? A lot. A straight lot. or gay? I, they claim to be straight, mm-hmm. and they're like, "Yo, dude, like, dude, like, don't, don't make it weird. Like, no one has to know. Don't make it weird." I'm like, <laughs> like one guy was like so poetic. He's like, "I would love to see the soles of your feet. They're probably so soft from teaching all those kids all day." I was like, "Dude, that's almost romantic." I was like, is it? I don't know. Oh, that's for boy wipes. 
But like, that's what people write to me. Or like, they'll be like, um, like, it's always fuck. It, I'm assuming they're gay guys. Like, what straight guy well, wants to see you would be my surprised? Feet? But why would you want to see my feet? Like, as a because people have kink, and that's what Lily. Yeah, Allen. but but if I'm a guy and I'm if I my kink is feet, I want to see a girl's foot. No. If you're a straight guy, yeah, I feel like everyone now is just kind of like whatever. Honestly, not everyone. I, I, but a lot of people are whatever. Maybe from situation. Some straight guy out there being like, I wonder what Gasper's feet. <laughs> well, you know, I always tell my wife like, if I ever film a video and like my feet are in it, I'm like, move the camera up, like you know. But like, she's like, oh, who cares? She's put like, my feet up here. <laughs> there you go. There it is. I just want. <laughs> look at that foot. Careful. You want get careful, some messages? Careful, dude. You don't know what you just, just opened. Yeah, just letting these piggies out for free. I want to let them out for free. You want to know what? What else you? <laughs> what else you? Pigs. Size thirteen. Size thirteen. That is a big foot. That's You're a... really doing it for somebody, right? Ha 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 ha. ha. Yeah. And me talking badly about it's doing it for them too. Yeah, they're they're right. Right. Oh God. <laughs> Fuck me. You're right. Getting, I'm disgusting. Gasper and Justin feet. <laughs> oh God. I would take my shoes Christmas off. Christmas came early and so did I. I yeah. would take my shoes off, but after walking five miles. Oh yeah. They're like, give me your socks. Give me your sunset socks. <laughs> sunset socks. <laughs> Let me do them a quick wipe. Hold oh on. God. We can uh, sell the wipe after. Look, you got you got like a nail polish on there. Like Any Letterman, eat your heart out. But now, the nail. <laughs> all right, so now you paint your toenails because I don't paint them. Oh, I have someone paint them for me. <laughs> but now, is it because you show your feet to people? No, I just like a little pop of color when I wear my sandals. Oh, because you wear sandals. Yeah, I don't. So I don't wear sandals. I wear like this is a good little. I'm getting into sandals this summer. Uh, you know. <clears throat> but um, normally I wear like tennis shoes, but it's just too damn hot. Yeah, they uh, that, they like abused me when I was on the show because I didn't bring any like footwear other yeah. than my white Nike Uptowns. So like we were in the pool, I was just sitting there poolside in my sneakers. So it sucks. Like so they're just yeah. like uh, we can't trust you. you they were like, sandals. dude, why? <laughs> why yeah. didn't you pack footwear? But it's okay. I mean, it's, it's like, barefoot or nothing. Yeah, or sneakers. Like I mean, if you're on vacation, yes. Like if you're at the pool, sandals for sure. But uh. This is what's crazy. So Lily Allen is she is uh she's not the only celebrity have jumped on the OnlyFans bat uh bandwagon. Denise Richards, Drea I heard about Mateo, Denise Richards, Bella Thorne, Tana Mongo, Carmen Electra, and Iggy Azalea are others who have launched accounts. And I say who gives a shit? Well, I honestly Carmen Electra has been like a sex symbol for the last forever years. Yeah. So like she's I doubt she's like having sex on no, OnlyFans. Well, I don't know. I don't, I don't think so. And like Iggy Azalea, is that Iggy Azalea's at the end? No. No, that is. I don't know anymore. She looks nice. They all just look like. <laughs> That's Cardi B. That's Cardi. Yeah. She's on. No, she's not on OnlyFans. No, that's Tyler Posey. Lottie Moss. Oh, good old Lottie Moss. Who's Lottie Moss? Exactly. Tyga's Tyga. not a. On own. There's no way these people are Tyga, on Bella These people, Thorne. these might just be like hot people. No, Bella Thorne was the first one to jump Denise on. Denise Richards, it, it's shocking. Well, to Denise me. and her mom, or I'm sorry, Denise and her daughter are both on OnlyFans. But they're not like having sex or naked. No, but my God, do you remember the housewives? She was uh, with with uh, Erica Jane. She's like, who makes more money on OnlyFans, you or your daughter? And it was like, <laughs> who made more? I think her daughter. I would say her. Denise Richards is a legend. Yeah. I don't know what her daughter Well, she's like a legend there. now because she can't put her jacket on correctly. I mean, that's the best thing ever for Housewives. She's like, she's like, Denise, your jacket, Dorit, do you watch Housewives at all? No, you don't. <laughs> Dorit, Dorit's, you know. One of them lived near me in Staten Island. Who? Oh, it was Mob Wives. Oh, okay. <laughs> Different wife. Different wife. Different franchise. Different wives. But Denise, like, was leaving. She was kind of, like, stoned or drunk, allegedly. And she had her jacket on upside down. And like <laughs> Erica Jane was like, you have your jacket upside Or Dorit was like, you have your jacket upside down. She goes, don't do that. I, I'm on to you. I know you're just trying to embarrass me on television. And she's like, no, your jacket's upside down. She's like, stop it. <laughs> but was it? Yes. But like started a new trend. The upside down jacket. Denise Richards. Here we have Catherine Dennist. Okay. Never heard of her. Larsa Pippen. She was housewives of Pippen. Miami and she's Traders. also dating. 
I don't know if they are anymore. Well, they broke they up. They broke up, and now they're yeah. back together, and then they might have broken Ooh. up again. Uh, uh, Michael Jordan's son. Okay. Also, Larissa Pippen said, like, recently in an interview Larsa. that her and Scottie Pippen used to have sex, like, four times a day. Okay. Yeah, she is. Yeah, she, I know. And she was like, oh, we have... And then she said with Michael Jordan's son, she was like, oh, uh, we have it, like, seven times a night. And people were like, what? Well, he's what, young. What? What do you mean? Come on. Seven? That's really? so That's odd. so much. Tana, she's... Um, speaking of people having sex before things or whatever... Yeah. Mike Tyson, I just read this thing that Mike Tyson used to have to have sex twice. Twice before he fought. Oh. Because he was so, like, on crazy... Like, his testosterone was, like, through the roof that, like, if he didn't have sex twice, he would, like, literally go in the boxing ring and rip the guy's head off. So I was thinking when I read that, like, think about that woman who had to have sex with him God. twice while he's that like enraged as mm -hmm. a person. You know what I mean? Like well, she probably couldn't move. When is his fight with Jake It got Paul? moved to November. It was supposed to well, be in the summer. Mike Tyson just needs to watch my feet and that will really help him loosen up some tension. Or, you or know? not at all because he might not be into feet. Oh, Mike Tyson's into feet. Let me tell you. <laughs> He's into anything. He loves feet. He likes feet and ears. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Here we have Real Housewives of Orange County's uh, Gina. How do we say her last name? Keo. Keo. She's like Barry Keo. I, I have a hard time saying the Irish last names. But is that Irish? Kiro? Right? Isn't Barry from Saltburn? Barry Keo. Yeah. Keo. Yeah. So she was an ex Playboy playmate back in the day. She, Which one? The uh, well, the one on the right. Oh. Okay. Yeah. The one on the left looks like she's cute. What does she look like? Well, that's her daughter, right? I know, but she looks like a like a Laura Flynn Boyle. Ooh, very much. Right? Yes. Yeah. So uh her uh Gina Keo is hilariously trolled by her daughter Kara or Kara after over edited photo. So these housewives are now doing a thing where they are just loving some Facetune. Oh <laughs> my god! Wait a second. Hold the phone. I did that not. That can't be real. No, 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 no. <laughs> Wait. No. She is a baby prostitute. That's funny, though. It's funny that the daughter wrote, take this down. And these are just the reactions from the uh, from the account Queens of Bravo. So she posted, Chip McAllister, Amazing Race first season and realtor for 10 years now. I remember when he first started, so proud of him, photoshopped. And her daughter, Kara, says, take this down now. <laughs> and then she posted the original version. And then her daughter said, there's my girl. <laughs> <laughs> got trolled by your own mom. Oh my God. I mean, I don't even know. But that's like insane. Cause like, that's not even r remotely close. No. Like, but that's what, that's an AI Barbie. Yes. But also like, why didn't she do the guy as well? Or did she? No, she did. She Look did. at the guy. She yeah. did attempt to do the guy. But he's but his... bald. So bald just looks different. Mm hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, these these housewives in the face tune are a real thing. They will have different hairlines. They will have different ears. They'll have different noses, lips. Do you I know mean, my my mom? She does this thing like where she'll just like go on Reddit and just like respond to people who make comments about me. And I'm like, Aww. mom, I'm like, stop. She's like, like someone was like, yes, but was so nice on the show. She's like, he always was, even as a little child, he was <laughs> such a sweet boy. I'm like, ma, I'm like. <laughs> Don't let them know anything about our personal lives. <laughs> like, we've already gone too much. Oh. Yeah. My mom still does that. We're like, she'll, there'll be like a negative comment about something and she'll be like, you tell them that I will yeah. come over there and I will <laughs> shove my foot up their ass like Lily Allen on OnlyFans. And I will, you know. You could like, photograph it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just so... It's so cute. Moms are the best. They are. Especially when when they know that their kids are being like, you know, bullied or Well, whatever. like that's her. She's like, someone's gotta speak to them. For I've you. got it. Like, yeah. No, I've they don't. No. I'm yeah. like, they don't, mom. Where I'm perfectly confident and okay with someone on the internet telling me I, you know, yeah, that I suck. You look weird, you suck. Some guy did tell me though, he was like, if I ever met you in person, I'd spit in your face. What? So I was I took that as an opportunity to like 
market the tour. So I was like, hey, you could actually catch me in. And I sent him all my tour <laughs> dates, which I thought yeah. was smart marketing on my end. And then he's like, great, flight booked. And then I was like, oh, fuck. Oh, my God. So I was like, just kidding. No. I was like, you're going to hey. meet the Hawk Tua boy. I, I was like, dude, I was like, actually kidding. Like, and then so like once in a while, like I'll tell that joke in stand up and then I'm like, but are you here? Like, yeah. Looking around, and but then I actually got invested in his. You just look at the back of the theater as a guy dressed in a raincoat, and he's like, <laughs> "You're dead to me." <laughs> but I got like invested in this guy's life. I went on his Facebook. Oh, God. I started go. I went back like ten years. I, I watched his wedding video. What? I, I just you know I because I fell into it. I was like, "What kind of person says this about someone based off a TV show?" Uh -huh. So then like I found out that his daughter has a birthday party coming up, and then like he was looking for a clown and balloon animal maker. And I was Did like, "You show up as the clown?" No, but I was like, "This is gonna be a great fucking birthday party." So I almost hope he comes, <laughs> so I could ask him. Like, yes, how was it? How was it? Like throw him off completely. Like, like bitch, he, I stalked you. He didn't post anything yeah. about it since the party. So I was like, I knew it happened, mm -hmm. and he hasn't posted. So I am curious. So I hope he comes. I had a guy. But he's got to pay for a ticket. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's not free. I had a guy who, uh, like, this was, shoot, like, years ago, and he was, like, sending me, like, DMs and, like, oh, yeah, you know, I think you're so hot, and I want to, like, la, 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 whatever, whatever, whatever. And I was just like, okay. He's like, when are you coming to Seattle? And, um, and he spelled coming, C U M M I N G. Yeah, of course. Of course. And I was like, well, I'll be there, you know, whenever, whatever month was. I'll actually be back in Seattle in um, August. So the here now. Get tickets to my uh, link tree. But not you, the creeper. But yeah. So found <laughs> Be there. The He's guy coming. Just, guy you didn't saw his feet. live in Seattle. He lived like outside of Seattle, like had to take a plane. It was like, oh, I'll fly out. I want to stay with you, all this kind of stuff. And I was like, this is getting like. That I means like, he definitely has a family. I clicked on the link. Yep. Found the guy, wife, two kids in the profile picture. And I clicked on the wife. It was like, just to let you know. No. Yes. Absolutely. Wow. 1000%. I'm like, your husband is sending me these messages. I've never met this guy before in my life. This is unfair to you. I said, yeah, who, if he's doing this to me, he's probably doing this to everyone that he can. You need to know about this person that you have married. Did she write back? Is that not good? I, I, that's a little crazy. I don't know. For me? Yeah. Why is I don't crazy know. for me? You're He's leaving that dressed up as a clown for a party. I was not. I want the guy to come to the. <laughs> I'm Wait, like, right, hold on. Did the wife respond? No. Did she read it? it well, it was on. Uh, it was a. Uh, it was Facebook. So I don't know. I didn't check. I was just like, and I'm done. And then I blocked the guy and was like, I'm done. Wow. But Damn, never, that's insane. The that's... guy never like showed up to my show. Did he ever message you again? Mm -mm. Yeah, because his wife fucking cut his penis off. <laughs> I stand with women. No, listen. Good for you. I I'm happy. I'm for sorry. You. I'm not gonna have this woman raising two kids with some piece of shit guy who's like off tapping his foot under a bathroom stall, and that's real. Risking her health and her family's health because he just can't keep his dick in his pants. No. Listen. A single mom who works two jobs. Yeah. <laughs> I'm with it. I just didn't think you were going that route. I Well, I'm like, you know, I'm just, it just sucks. And it's just like, I think it's just lame. But um, here's a woman who I can get behind, no pun intended. Kate Beckinsale. Uh, she has uh, Same here, pun intended. Yeah, she has flashed her bare butt out of a window to a public street. And a lot of people are wondering, what's going on with Kate? So she went out on the streets and her friend and herself engaged in an evening of pranks following the death of her cat. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, the cat was not on Ozempic. Look at those shoes, though. Yeah. Those, what you, the hell? You could wear those shoes in the sand. <laughs> <laughs> I could get on roller coasters with those shoes on. <laughs> um, Kate Beckinsale... Everyone's wondering what's going on with her. Everyone processes their grief differently, obviously, and she is channeling her mourning emotions into a mooning escapade following the death of her beloved cat, Clive. The underworld and love and friendship actress shared Monday night in a video of herself showing her bare butt from the window of a tall building while Kate Beckinsale's friend, uh, designer Nina Kate, filmed her. The day after Clive died and I received... What? The day after Clive died and I... These are, I, do people not know how to spell anymore? 
Am I reading this wrong? No, the day after Clive died and I received some of the most... It's just poorly worded. Kate, I get it. You, you I don't think Kate your, said it like that. Well, she's just yeah, saying is, words. Oh, is. she's grief-stricken and can't... It is taken from her. It is taken. Oh. Yeah. yeah. The day after Clive and I... The, wait, the day... Let's do it again. The day after Clive died and I received some of the most horrific news I've ever received the na that next morning... That is, that is a... What is happening? I don't know. She's spiraling. Sometimes there's nothing for it but for your friend to show up as hard as possible and spend the evening making prank calls and mooning Harvey Nichols because sometimes when the bottom falls out of your world, the only response after crying till you're sick is your own bottom. At Nina Kate, I'll never forget you jumping into the fire with me. Why was your ex. friend hard? <sighs> Where's the other angle of that picture? She's shitting on the questions. window. <laughs> <gasps> Imagine like your cat dies and you're like, let's go crazy. Let's, We're fucking adults. Let's go prank people. Let's go call like, people. Uh, let's call strangers and be like, <laughs> just kidding. I remember when my dog died, I was grief stricken. Then I had to take a final for my fucking history test in college. Yeah, that's real life. Yeah, you know? I was like, like I'm going to skip this test yeah. and go moon the quarter or the, the, the common grounds. Yeah. So the other news that she got is, is, uh, that she's mourning the loss of her stepfather. As well. So, uh, uh, okay. So it was double the pranks. Uh, double. So yeah, her cat, her cat could be mooning. Her stepdad is uh, calling strangers. This, what the hell just happened? I don't know. But look at those shoes. What's the next picture on this? I don't know what's worse, Pearl Harbor or her career. That's, <laughs> is that the view from her ass? <laughs> yeah. I don't understand. Where's, <laughs> where's her butt? And there's literally no people on the street. Kate, if you're going to moon people, you got to have people down there. But her friend took this picture and was like, Kate, I ah, got him. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to start following her on Instagram. Oh, yeah. That's what she She's, wants. She seems like she's spiraling. She does look like she's shitting. Yeah, she's she's definitely just like. Mm, mm. So um, yeah, I think uh, we gotta just keep an eye out on Kate Beckinsale because uh, having were, a hard day. Well, people didn't know like people thought she was face tuned to filth for a while because like all of her pictures were weird, and then she started like dressing up and going to red carpets all weird and. Now she's mooning. And and by the way, so for the listeners at home, if you do get a spam risk call, pick it up. It could be Kate Beckinsale on the other line. <laughs> she might be uh, like... Is your refrigerator ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm the yeah. queen of the underworld, bitch. And she hangs up. <laughs> I'll see you in hell, underworld. Yeah. Um, I definitely think <laughs> it could be Kate Beckinsale. If you get a spam risk, pick it up. You want to talk to a celebrity? It could be Kate. Or it could be Kevin Bacon. It could be Kevin Bacon, who also disguised himself as a non-famous person for a day, and he said, you know what? This sucks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Bacon decided to see what life was like for the average person, and he wasn't a fan. Kevin Bacon, a household name since his breakout role in 1984's Footloose, recently decided to see what life was like for the average person. In a new interview with Vanity Fair, Bacon shares his experience of attempting to blend in with the crowd for a day. He says, I went for a special effects makeup artist, had consult consultations, and asked him to make me a prosthetic disguise. The 65-year-old actor felt the need for such measures due to his frequent recognition in public. Yeah, because everyone is six degrees away from you. <laughs> I'm not complaining, but I have a face that's pretty recognizable. <laughs> same, Kevin. Same. Putting my hat and glasses on is only going to work to a certain extent, he explains. Equipped with a prosthetic nose, fake teeth, and glasses, Bacon ventured to the tourist-heavy shopping complex, <gasps> The Grove in Los Angeles. The transformation was so effective that he went completely unnoticed. Nobody recognized me. People were kind of pushing past me, not being nice. Nobody said, I love you. Uh, he quipped, he goes, you know what? I had to wait in line too. I don't know, buy a fucking coffee or whatever. I was like, this sucks. I want to go back to being famous. Well, <laughs> I, I get it. Because, Do you? Yeah, because at, first off, I think this is a little taken out of context because Kevin Bacon probably was. Jo I don't think he. Was th I think he was a, joking yeah. about this. Yeah, like he probably was like. Yes. Yeah, it was great being famous. This sucks. Like, yeah. I don't think he was like, haha. Yeah. Peons. Like, I agree. I, I think Kevin Bacon, based off of only knowing him on TV. Yes. Um, that he is a funny guy. You I know, think like he, yes, I agree. I was gonna. I was like, I don't think he's that asshole. No, nah, I don't. Ally. 
He's a Hollywood legend. And yeah. And honestly, I think he was just like, just like, ah, oh, let's just see what it is. Let's just have some fun. And and like having like no one notice him. He was just, you know, what? I had to wait for coffee. I, uh, people weren't saying I love you. I think yeah, I like kidding. the thing he, I think it's a joke. And of yes. course, like the comments. They're like, oh, what like, an asshole. What a dick. Yeah. I saw it on like a... Uh, one of those like TMZ, you know, whatever. And yeah. the comments were like ripping him, and they're like, "Oh, sorry, you had to wait in line." It's like he was joking, guys. Like that's a joke I would make. You but know you what know I what? mean? In defense with Kevin Bacon, I hate waiting in line at the Grove too. It yeah. sucks. But also in defense of Kevin Bacon, even if because people were saying like, "Must be so hard being so rich." Like some of the comments were like, "Oh, you chose this life," but he chose to be an actor. Yeah. Yes, he chose to. Be a great actor, whatever. You know what I mean? Like that came with fame, that came with fortune. But he didn't choose to every day of his life be stopped, recognized, yeah. and have to put on a performance. You know, because like it's not like you could just be a regular. Like imagine you're going to throw out your garbage at three in the morning. You're in your underwear, and people are outside taking pictures of you. You know, like it's probably. Well, that sounds alluring. No, I'm just like picturing it. So you know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. it, it, like it probably gets frustrating. So yeah. I'm sure he's like. I just want to freaking just be normal, you know? Well, I get it. Did you know we had this set up the whole time um, and we're going to let you in on it? You're Kevin uh, Bacon. <laughs> the homeless tweaker that you saw outside was none other than Tyra Banks. <laughs> <laughs> she wanted to know what it was like to be homeless tweaking for a day. And today was her day. And uh, she said it was awful. Are you familiar with that story? Do you remember the Tyra Banks show at all? Can we just I, I remember. Up? I remember the show, but I don't remember watching. Tyra it. Banks went into disguise as well um, as a homeless person. She wanted to feel the struggles of a, 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 a unhoused person, and she lasted for maybe a couple hours. <clears throat> she also disguised herself as a heavy set person. She also disguised herself as a person with rabies. Uh, <laughs> Tyra is just the most unhinged. Is that her? Uh, as go to videos. <clears throat> Let's see. Type in maybe Tyra Banks homeless. Yeah, Tyra Banks homeless. And I knew I wasn't going to spend the night there, but. I wanted to feel the terror of actually laying on the hard cement out in the open and exposed and calling it my day. I was heartbroken. It'd be nice if you guys could just leave for a second. Just give me a little time. Like we could just go. I was about to lose it because I was like, how can we be so blind to these people who live like this every day? Mm. Thank you, Mind Tyler. you, she is in a neutral foundation. <laughs> uh, she just has a couple of smudges from Mac and just a just her hair wrapped and in. she's using a public bathroom that looks yeah, pretty she was clean using, I, she didn't even need the bathroom code like she just there she is just an advocate <laughs> does that look America's just, next do you remember top, her now walking down sunset America's Next Top Homeless person. America's Next Top Homeless that would be the show How she's so young there holy crap yeah yeah well she did a lot of a lot of uh, stunts like this where and I also think that she's the one that made Beyonce stop doing television interviews because she, when Beyonce was at the top of her game, she was like making puns off of Beyonce's name. So Tyra Banks is the most unhinged woman of uh, reality television and I love her for it. So anyways, uh, did you have fun today? I did. This Good. Cool. Why did I say that like Moira Rose? Did you have fun today? It was fun. Um, I'm so glad you came. Yeah, me Thank too. Thank you so much for joining us. Where can everyone follow you and check out your tour dates? All of it. Um, Plug away. All right. You can find me on Instagram at Stand Up Randazzo. That's like stand, stand up comedy mm. or stand mm. up from a chair. I don't know. It's a pun. Yeah. Stand up Randazzo, my last name, R-A-N-D-A-Z-Z-O. You can see me on tour, GasparRandazzo.com. I'll be in D.C., Nashville, uh, Austin, Dallas, Cincinnati, Columbus, uh, a whole bunch of other cities that I can't think of right this second. Yeah. Um, you can GasparRandazzo.com, G-A-S-P-A-R-E-R-A-N-D-A-Z-Z-O.com. But if you go to Instagram, Stand Up Randazzo, everything's there. Thanks for awesome. having me. Of course, Gasper. Thank you so much for listening. And we will catch you guys next time on the Just Saying Podcast. Take care. Bye. Bye.